4 p.m. stack, let's start. So um, welcome to my talk, Metabolism 2, going deeper with metabots and shaders. Um, that's me, if you want to find me online on Twitter, Instagram, stuff, um, just hit me up there. It's usually the place where I'm the most reachable. Um, and also I need to fix something here really quick. Uh, and yeah, this is now my sixth conference, uh, the third time speaking, and um, also my second time speaking about metabolites for you. Um, yeah, more on this. Um, like metabolites are right now the, um, until there's no full VD open VDB support in Blender, um, the only like implicit surface and the only way to actually like work with volumes in a um, yeah, really um, active way. Uh, so implicit surfaces, just like the, the super recap for you, is um, it's just like we are not defining the geometry directly by polygons, faces, and lines, but we are defining points in space that have a radius and um, that can affect each other uh, radiuses. So um, we're going to talk in this, or I'm going to talk in this um, spotlight uh, about a short recap what happened in the last two years um, between me talking the first time about metabolites then I'm going to show you, uh, again, the basics, because it's always good to know what you're dealing with. Um, last time I was talking, I skipped the particles a bit. It's just like, oh, yeah, you can also do stuff with particles. So more on that. And also, um, after looking into shading, we're going to take a look at how we can reuse metabots in other packages, but also like in uh, one project to the another project, and uh, maybe in places where it's um, not sufficient to use like the raw implicit surface. Starting with the short recap. So what changed, what did I learn? The first thing, I think I said it wrong again. It's meta, not meta, and I'm going to remember this now. I really learned this the hard way. Um, thank you, YouTube comment section. <laughs> I gotcha, but I also got a meatball sandwich for you with meta balls. So um, at least there's that. Uh, yeah, the last talk I um, recorded was in September 70, uh, 2017. Back then, there was like a big keynote, the workflow project, and uh, Tom was super excited. But um, there was like mainly like lots of tiny projects shaping up to something bigger. Um, things that were super new back then, and they were not like even conceived, but just an, as an idea. It's like uh, the viewport upgrade, um, EV in general as like a, a real-time PBR renderer, then also um, asset management, uh, linking and overrides that are now, um, I heard, are in the master. Um, but also, um, like, Grease Pencil was just uh, still a rough version and not as uh, fine and as um, done as now. So, let's go back to the basics. Not only to be on the same page, like the room and uh, my little brain, but also um, to check what's new in 2.8. It's not too much, because, like, I think we checked yesterday, like, the last real commit to Metaboss with, like, a change was 2015 or so. It's like, there's not a much changing there. But we have five types of meta balls or meta objects. These are available in edit mode of the meta objects. And yes, meta objects have an edit mode. I need to just like put this first. You can um, spawn directly a meta ball inside Blender, just like as an object. And you can uh, pop into edit mode with tab. The first object is the meta ball. It's like the object with like the least amount of uh, properties. We just have like the type, stiffness, and radius, and some, some bools to check. Then we have the capsule, which is basically a ball with another dimension, stretching out over the size x. We have the plane, which is then two-dimensional, stretching over x and y. We got an ellipsoid, which is just like a, a squishable um, sphere. And uh, last but not least, the meta cube, which then, of course, has um, the uh, four dimensions, so you can scroll um, and scale it around. Properties. Um, these are often only available in edit mode. So what you see here is already like popped into edit mode and uh, exposing all the objects or all the properties of the active object. Um, is this running? Yes, perfect. So here we can see uh, how this is working. I should not fall off stage. Um, and you can basically just like scale around this mushy object. Uh, you can do the same thing with the plane. And also you can, oh no, it's still the cube. Uh, make it to a plane and also can make it really, really sharp by um, lowering the radius of the meta object. So it's not working with the sphere, but um, with with the plane and the cube, it's like a really efficient way to get super hard edges even with the meta objects. Uh, yeah, and then there's also 
the capsule with basically the same options. Uh, sometimes it's hard to understand what stiffness and what the radius is doing because the stiffness is basically harden uh, the shape that the uh, matter object is going to um, trying to form and the radius is like setting the maximum threshold. So like these are uh, working with each other but um, just play around like Blender is free and maybe not your time but it's really fast to just start playing with this. Um, yeah, the biggest thing about Metabots to actually use them in like some kind of production way is the naming convention because it's not as you might always expect. So when you use meta objects, um, you need to just make sure that you name them correctly and the correct way is a bit strange. So we got only one suffix for meta objects, which is dot and then the number. So if you want to like group your objects, which I often do by like giving them like your own um, suffix, this will uh, appear as a new meta object and will not uh, weld together with the other objects. So um, this is a bit hard, but the good thing is we have now collections in Blender 2.8, so you can group your hierarchies with collections and I do not have the problem of uh, losing track like this. Um, so yeah, but my old naming conventions uh, totally break. The good thing also is 2.8 has um, batch renaming uh, included. Before there were like add-on solutions. Now you just hit Alt plus F2, uh, and you basically just like rename all your objects and have like your own um, group of meta balls. They're super easy to handle. You can pop them into the collection and you're done. Um, and also, pro tip: this also works backwards. So if you have like a, a group of meta balls that is not the same namespace, you just like put the namespace of your meta ball you want to group with, and then you have uh, back. A full running metaball system. Uh, another thing that I also just like slightly touched first time, Boolean operations. It's like, nah, not really Boolean operations, but at least you can invert meta objects for subtractions. So for anyone wondering how a uh, meta object really works, it's two objects to, uh, together. But if we uh, invert it, we can actually subtract shapes. And we can subtract super hard shapes meaning that we get even like hard edges and um, like hard safe surface detail that we would basically not expect when actually using these things the first time because you like add some of these objects and get like a blobby snowman, but you can really do sharp and uh, mechanical edges. Um, yeah, if you have issues with this whole thing and uh, you don't get re result with like the um, hard cutoff, just um, push the strength of your subtractive object to 10. This somehow gives you the cleanest results. Uh, but yeah, be warned, is the video playing? No. These objects are a thing on their own. They behave on their own rules. They often feel easy to understand, but they're not. And so um, just you can't easily invert your um, operation because of the different stiffnesses. So you need to again play with uh, radii and stiffness to actually subtract then the sphere from this cube. So like it's not like a Boolean operation where you can just like switch direction, but you really need to think about the influences and also um, doubling of influences. Uh, yeah, one of the last points that I not explicitly um, told in the interface is the resolution and grid offset. So basically what we're doing is we have a, a meta object. This is describing a sphere, a cube, or a capsule surface. And then Blender goes in and meshes this object with triangles. Um, and then you get like a grid of triangles that are like quad triangles. Um, you have a scale slider for rendering and for preview, but you can influence also this resolution by just changing the scale of your first meta ball. So if you go into the hierarchy you see here and I move around the, um, the child meta ball, uh, let's skip again. Like if I move around one of these um, child meta balls, the grid is staying solid. But as soon as I pop in the um, main meta ball and I move the main meta ball, the whole grid is moving. This could be something that you don't want because this gives like flickering and animations and also like the, basically the super bad topology will update on each frame if this um, main meta ball is moving. So keep this in mind uh, to keep like the main meta ball somewhere out of your scene so that the rest is uh, with static um, topology. Yeah, also at higher resolutions, this will be unnoticeable well, because like your resolutions can get like close to um, pixel size, so uh, then there's no moving apparent. This is a blank slide. This was actually just a blank slide. Okay, uh, the next thing, also Blender 2.8.0 already, yes, zero already, is the multi-object edit mode. 
Uh, for people that come from other packages, this might not be new, but for Blender users, we usually could just like edit one object in edit mode at once. Now we cannot only edit multiple meta balls um, of one like meta group at once, but we can even pop into a more complex object like this guy I'm showing you later and uh, edit multiple um, groups of meta balls. You see this here with like multiple mesh colors in the viewport um, at once. And yeah, the performance usually is much better, but I did like this recording uh, on the Intel thing with like high resolution display and screen recording was a, a bit much. So talking about all these things and also talking about the sharp detail and also a bit showing the sharp detail you can get here in the mouth. Is there a hard surface modeling practical or available with meta objects? Kind of. So I need to tell you like I'm not the best hard surface modeler. I really don't like it, but you can do stuff that somehow looks interesting um, because it's shapes that you would often like work uh, really a lot on when you build it in um, polygons, except for using add-ons that like bevel your stuff. Um, but you can also get like shapes that maybe are just more creative or like more flowing for your um, for your style, and this will really not be the next way you're going to do like your big sci-fi mesh, um, but maybe it's a way to like differentiate your style or your work from somebody else's. And also, there's talented people around, and there's talented people on the internet. So uh, Emiliano um, uh, posted this, and I contacted him, and I was like super amazed because like this is just like a bunch of meta balls grouped together, and to see a bit more. He actually sent me a rendering. Um, like this is solid work. Like there's there's no no reason why this would not be applicable in like a, a, a sci-fi movie or like a, even like replicating maybe um, how plastic molds are made. So um, just put the time in and you get something really interesting out of this. And again, as I will tell you with like my last slides, uh, you can export this stuff and you can reuse it for uh, your next project. Uh, so I'm rush. No, I'm actually not rushing that much. I just have 15 minutes left. So more on particles. Uh, the last time I came in and talked about metabots and particles, I basically said like, yeah, you can use them together. Do it. Uh, but I'm still not sure <laughs> if this is the way to teach. So let's just take a look at how easy it is. So we had a plane. We had a particle system. Uh, yeah, just some value, so it's like sprinkling, sprinkling out of the surface in a random fashion. And then instead of rendering as a halo, we just render it as an object. And we pick our meta ball. Why don't I hit play? Ah, yeah, and then I can scale it up because uh, the current uh, meta ball would be too slow, too small. And then we just hit space and we get this uh, splashy water fountain. Yeah changed like the randomness of the scale to get like a more dynamic um, view. It's like super stuttering. Okay, so, but last time I was talking, I said like, oh yeah, you can like fake fluids when you're taking like uh, actually a physical simu simulation of rigid bodies and like they touch together. And then I read up on particles and what I was doing was basically a super, super hacky way to emulate SPH fluids. Because basically what I wanted to get is like particles or stuff flowing around and touching each other and like bouncing off. And this is basically what the SPH solver does in like a, a way more optimized way. So to access this and to have like a more, um, where like the, even the meta objects themselves or like the particles are interacting with each other, um, we just have to change the solver. So you go into physics, change the fluid solver. I don't need to do anything. And now you see like there's like a bit of different motion and you can mainly see that it's now with a new loop that you get like this moment where like the um, droplets that are coming down from like the first pushing out will like bounce against the um, uh, new rendered uh, particles. And uh, I show you some examples with this. I can't give you like this um, full on recipe uh, because there's like still a lot of trial and error. But um, I've been rendering these uh, sequences I will show you now out in like, I think like the full thing in an hour was just like setting up a rendering system, um, then like adding the particles, a force field, and then rendering the stuff with Eevee. So it's just a, uh, one, just basically the plane emitting particles into a meta ball um, around a, um, how you say, like a force field. And uh, that's just it. 
and the thing flows around. Also, this is without gravity. So um, to do particles without gravity, you just like uncheck it in the world settings and you're done. Uh, the same thing with gravity often looks like a bit more interesting because you get like this splashing out to the ground. And here's like a big blob dropping out, done. Um, one last one, uh, turbulence field, no gravity, um, just flowing around. And of course, this is not like your uh, flip fluid simulation with like ultra high density. This is not like the old solver like uh, touching flat surface leaves perfectly, but it's something that is hyper art directable because you can go in, bake your particles and just like actually keyframe your own particles along or like you know, keyframe your own metabots along and they will um, just um, flow into the surface and will be like super, super flat. So I dropped the word shaders into my title um, because somehow I, I have this layer-based approach I want to show you um, that is way more clear than uh, again last time. Also in 2.79, I'm not sure if it's fixed, there was a bug where the viewport would not update the thing I was doing. So uh, now I show you a way to use meta objects as origins for textures, so or shaders in general. So um, the thing is each a meta ball object can also behave like an empty or just like an origin of any object of kind of object. And um, this is just the node setup and it's actually like in the groups, there's not much stuff in there. And we get like this uh, result here. And I would just like go through and explain what's actually happening in the, the thing. Uh, the first thing is just like really important. We're using texture coordinates with object coordinates coming from different objects. And what's actually happening there, we can see when we debug uh, this color channel. So if you just use the metaball object um, texture coordinates, you see like the, the whole cross is moving from the colors, but if we uh, use like a different object, we get the same cross, but just another cross section of the colors, again moving. So uh, this is uh, then exposed and just like adding multiple of these texture coordinates together. So to add multiple texture coordinates together, we first need a simple way to use one. And for this, we're taking a gradient shape. And I'm just like hiding what I do here for now and map this gradient shape onto one of the meta balls. Here's like the original meta ball, like I'm doing exactly what I told you not to do. I'm moving the original one. Um, but you can see like it's popping in and out of existence in the shape. And it's not looping. And we're just getting the um, object data and mixing it with the base color. Um, I try to make like the base color a bit to the side so you can understand like that everything I add here um, on the right hand side is just like added on top. <laughs> so the uh, group I use seems to generate like uh, some field of influence and it's basically just a um, gradient texture that is spherical which we can cut off at like a, a certain point and I'm using a color ramp to get like a easy access to the blending between the pink and the blue color. Um, and also if I have everything in a node group, they will just like link their information and it will be uh, super easy to just uh, reuse all the data for uh, more layers of color. So let's add more layers. Um, with control H, thank you Joshua. Um, I learned you can hide all the unused node sockets, which is super practical. Uh, we can actually clean up our, um, our viewport a bit and then just um, see what happens if we add like another uh, group. So I just copied over the uh, texture coordinates and entered on the left-hand side the object, uh, the corresponding object. And then I just like have a mix shader with like, you can really think of this factor here as like an alpha in different packages, um, just mixing in the different colors. Um, and so this is everything I need to do. But what if I want to activate and deactivate something? I can just go in and hide the different, um, or mute the different nodes, and it will always just add the color one through the node tree, and I can activate or deactivate the blue, pink, and turquoise colors. So you can really like go in and um, debug also what you're doing. So let's really add another layer by hand. So what do we need to do? We have a new meta ball. We have a new, ooh. We have also a new mix node where we can like put a new color. I'm putting orange here and then checking if it's actually full orange. 
Now we can copy over our nodes, like there's no actual need to do like more than copying it. And then we're also linking Metaball 4 with Metaball 4 and the texture coordinates. Ta-da! It's working. Let's check. Yes, it's actually working. I'm moving it here during the animation by hand. And as you can tell, like this is Eevee and this is actually running on this tiny MacBook Pro. Uh, it's running in real time and just giving you the update. Um, to, bit this, to make this a bit more handleable, because like, again, I told you, you cannot rename the uh, Metaball objects. You should use empties as origin at one point if you have like a really complex object. And also this gives you uh, the opportunity to change um, the orientation of your texture, like every time you do it with like a mesh object, um, like separated from the actual object. So let's take a look at this uh, sick looking guy. It's like really bad in color. Um, I think we need to make him feel better. So um, I have one object. It's like an um, empty object just in the middle of the scene. It's the cube. And I called it already a main gradient, just so you can see it here in orange. Um, this is my controller now. I also added the main gradient um, in the texture coordinate. But as I can see here, I'm not generating a texture with it as of now. So, how do we activate this thing? We have everything connected. We have the mapping just to make sure where the point is starting. And then we're activating the gradient texture. And boom, gradient. Because we don't want to like, uh, have him like super hot, we're going to need to find a way to make him like, look a bit more comfortable. So, we cannot only move the empty, but we can also rotate it to give him like, a little blush. And also, we could animate this super nicely during the, the full thing. So, like, if he's getting like really angry, you just like move the empty up, so he's getting super angry. Or we can just like give him like a more flashy color. Yeah, but the thing I really want to do is just like rotate it on the axis you cannot see, to just color in like the face parts that are popping out, and just give him like a, a nice little blush that's maybe a bit too much. Um, yeah, and just as in, in the last example with like just the colorful spheres blobbing around, we can simply add more details by just adding um, more um, objects. Is this now the real video? Yes. So here I just take in the ears, which is Metaball 6 and Metaball 7, and reconnect it like the node group I had from my old file, which is just like, again, texture mapping um, plus uh, gradient. And now I can mix this in. Let's see. Yeah, so, and then I activate the mix nodes, and you can see, like, you get, like, the, some fake SSS or whatever, like, popping out of the ears. Um, so you just get, like, this red spots in the ears, just like I'm here on stage. Um, so you get, like, the, the full fidelity. And you can just, like, copy over those layers. I saw, like, Simon Thomas node group, um, and there's, like, super crazy, like, millions of nodes. Like, this is just, like, 15 or so. So you should be safe doing crazy stuff. You should also be safe when reusing meta objects. And the good thing is, you can just mesh them via Alembic. So last time I stood on stage, I was asking like, oh yeah, it's like not possible to export them via Alembic. And they're not into 2.8 yet. And so Subrin made sure that they're exporting to Alembic and now it's working. So what do you have to do to export your meta balls to Alembic? You take your simulation from before you export as Alembic data somewhere on your desktop. And then you have like this loading bar because it's basically taking every frame, saving it into a mesh file and exporting. And then you can just go in in a new file, import set exported file, and you have your simulation uh, in the next file. This of course has implications, I cannot change the um, the meshing um, as I did before, but I can in and actually change um, the mesh that is now like a sequence of um, meshes per frame and can, for example, like decimate it for stylization. I talked again about like super art directable fluids. This would be a way like to make these um, low poly style looking fluids um, that are actually animating. Now we have like this um, 
full sequence animated, but maybe we just need to um, have like one frame of metaballs saved. So we can just use convert to. It's basically applying uh, all the effects and baking in the uh, topology. Did I already do this in the recording? So I hit convert to, mesh, and that's it. I don't see a big result because it's currently taking the same uh, resolution as uh, the rendering. Um, yeah, and now I have like a super messy mesh, but I can remesh it with the remesh modifier and get like a more quad mesh. I can remesh it with the new voxel uh, remesh remeshing, and I learned you can also mesh it with quad, quad flow, uh, a new way to have like super clean uh, quad meshes in Blender. And um, this is, I think, in 2.81 now. And um, yeah, super easy. You just like put in quad flow into the search bar. You just make sure that it's not using symmetry. And off you go. Like 5,000. Just like a tiny change. This operation takes a while, but the result looks super nice. Fifty percent, boom! And um, I don't know if you have seen like the meshes that uh, regular metabots generate. You would never be able to add sub subdivisions on such thing, but on this you could add subdivisions later to have like a animatable character. Promising. Uh, but also there's like one way to really get the most out of metabots, but this is a whole nother talk. It's retopology. It's just like remeshing with your bare hands. Basically, if you do like um, use metabots for sculpting volumes and for um, yeah, just getting uh, something that's really like production ready, you should take uh, your character or your model you did and actually um, do clean retopology by hand. Before you all go, I would really like to take a picture of you all standing there. So if you don't mind, I'm just grabbing my phone right now because this room is super full. <laughs> I just need to brag a bit. Uh, and also, why I will do so, you will be all laughing because I'm not sure if you know him yet, but we will know now. One more thing. Julian Glander, an illustrator and animator uh, from the USA, I think. Um, he's doing stuff for the New York Times, and he's doing stuff on his own. And um, I have this very seasonal video for you that he uh, kindly uh, made available to me, so have fun. <laughs> Thank you. And you don't need to do lo-fi stuff like this. You can go crazy. Do millions of polygons. Bye.